our module set, which is over function notation. So we'll start with some review of what a function is, and then with some vocab, and then um, we'll jump into the function notation. So the first blank says a relation is any set of ordered pairs. And every ordered pair has a relationship between the x and y, which is why we call it a relation. The set of the x-coordinates, or the input, in that relation is called the domain. We're not going to talk a lot about domain in this module in the summer assignment, but we will talk about domain once the school year starts. The input is always the x variable. That's what you control in the function. Now, the y coordinates, the set of outputs, is called the range. I'm sure you've heard these words before back in algebra one. The output of a function is always the y variable. It depends on the input. Now, a function is a relation where every element of the domain corresponds with exactly one element of the range. Now, so that's a complicated sentence. The simplified version says every x value has exactly one y value that matches to it. No x value will repeat. That's the way we like to think about it. You can also use what's called the vertical line test to determine if a graph of a relation is a function. So what happens is, if, see, I have this blue sideways parabola. If I draw this line vertically, through that graph, you can see that the graph, it crosses the graph two times. That means that same x value that I drew the line at has two different y values, which makes it not a function because there are two y values associated with that x value when we can only have one. Well, let's put the definition of a function to work. Let's decide if these graphs, tables, and ordered pairs are functions. So the first one here. In order to tell if a set of ordered pairs is a function, I'm looking only right now at the x values. I want to start by seeing do any of those x values repeat. And I should be able to see that right here. The x that equals 3 repeats itself. So now I look at the y values. Well, it has two different y values, 0 and 10. Because those y values are not the same, this is not a function. In number two, I look at the x column for any repeating x's. And it looks like every single x is different. I don't. I know that there are y's that are the same, but that doesn't matter. I'm looking for the x's. I can't have any x that's the same. So this is a function. Number three, I'm going to use the vertical line test. If I drew a vertical line anywhere on this graph, you would see it crosses that graph two times. That x value of two has two different outputs. So it is not a function. In number four, no matter where I draw a vertical line, it only crosses one time. That means that x value has one output value. So it is a function and passes the vertical line test. All right, quick review there. Let's jump to function notation. The box there I'll talk about in a second. But we're given this function, f of x equals x over 3 plus 7. Now, the f of x is just a different way to write y equal, right? It's just a different notation or way to write it. The thing, the variable that is inside the parentheses here is the input. That is always x. So in part a, when I say evaluate f of 6, that number in the parentheses is an x value. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the output, the y value, for that x value of 6 in the function. So I'm going to put 6 in place of the x. So I'm going to write 6 over 3 plus 7. Now to simplify 6 over 3 is 2 plus 7 and 2 plus 7 is 9. That 9 is the y value, the output that goes with the input of 6. Alright, same thing here for b. To find f of negative 9. The negative 9 is in the parentheses, so it's the x. You're going to take negative 9 over 3 plus 7, which is negative 3 plus 7, equals 4. And that 4 is the output or the y value. Let's try a different function. g of x equals 3x minus 5. Well, to find g of 4, that 4 is the x value. So again, just like before, I'm putting 4 in where the x is. So I'm going to 
I'll put the 4 in parentheses. I'll have 12 minus 5, which equals 7. Now, 7 is the answer, what it equals. But now B changes it up. That A part should be pretty simple. B changes it up. It says, find the X value for which G of X equals 16. Notice, the 16 is not in the parentheses. It's not an X value. It's the output. It's what you equal. So the 16 is actually the Y. So the way we find the X value, when I give you what the answer is, is I take that 16 and set it equal to the original function. What I'm going to do there is solve for X, and that will tell me what the input has to be to give me the output of 16. All right, so then I'll finally divide by 3, and I'll get 7 has to be the input value. All right, part C, same thing. Find the x value for g of x is negative 8. Well, that negative 8 is a y value again. So I'm going to set it equal to the function. And I'm going to solve that function for x. Well, negative 3 equals 3x. And that tells me negative 1 is the input I was looking for. That's the trickiest part, b and c. And I have here, watch out. When the number is in the parentheses, it's an x value. When the number is after the equal sign, it's a y value. And you need to set that number equal to the original function and solve for x. It's what we just did, but that's important. It's something that people forget very often. All right, let's switch to tables and graphs here. So, for example, this table represents uh, the temperature of water. It says water at 200 degrees, 212 degrees Fahrenheit was left in a room to cool. All right, each hour they took the temperature reading and it's recorded in the table. Evaluate T of 2. Well, the input here is 2. That's the number of hours. So, go to where T is 2, or I'm sorry, hours is 2. And that gives me an output of 104. So, I'm going to write in function notation here T of 2 equals 104. Now, what that means in context, that means translate that math sentence to an English one, is after two hours, the water is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to do the same thing for part B. It says, what's T of 6? Well, 6 is also the hours. I go to where my hours are here of 6. I get a temperature of 68. So a similar sentence would be after six hours, the water is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the next part says for what value of H? So now we're finding the hours when the temperature, T of H, is 76. Well, I'm finding the temperature of 76 here. It looks like the hours is four. So it looks like it's going to take four hours gives you a temperature of 76. And I can write a similar kind of sentence there. I'm just going to say it. Finally, between what two consecutive hours will T of H equal 100? So between what two hours will the temperature be 100 degrees? Well, looks like I go from 104 to 85. So somewhere in between two and three hours, I will get to 100 degrees. Great. Table should be pretty simple. Let's finish up with a couple of graphs here. All right, function notation works the same. It says f of 1 equals, the 1 is in parentheses, so that's an x. Now, before we start, I'm sorry, I want to look at this graph. I know it's a function because that graph would pass the vertical line test. Anywhere I drew a line, it would only cross one time. Now, to find the value of f of 1, I go to where x is 1. So I go to my x-axis here. I go to where x is 1, and I go up to the graph. Looks like the point is at... 1, 4, which means the y value is 4 for the x value. And the ordered pair that that function notation represents is what I wrote, 1, 4. For f of 5, that 5 is an x value. So I go to where x is 5, is right here. And to go to the graph, I have to go down 2 to negative 2. And that point is at, I'm sorry, 5, negative 2 which is represented by the x and y of my function notation. At f of negative 3, well, that's an x value again. So I go to negative 3 here, and I have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. So 
my ordered pair would be negative 3, negative 4, which is the point there on the graph. And finally, f of 0, I go to where x is 0 here, it looks like I have to go up to 2. And that point is 0, 2. Alright, now, we're going to go the other way. I'm going to erase the graph a little bit here. It says, solve the following for the values of x that make these function notation true. First it says, where, what x value does f of x equal 0? Well, that's the y value of 0. And back a couple modules ago, we talked about graphing lines. And we said if we know y equals 0, that's a horizontal line. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line at y equals 0. That happens to be the x-axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where my graph crosses the line I drew. And I'm going to write down those x values I marked. The first one's where x equals negative 1. The second one's where x equals 4. And 5, 6, 7. So that means those points, where I marked here, that was the point negative 1, 0. 4, 0. 7, 0. Which were all points that had y value of 0. Which is what I was actually looking for. I was looking for the x values that gave me an output of 0. So I'm going to do the same thing for f of x equals 2. I'm going to draw a line at y equals 2. And find the two spots here where my graph crosses. That happens at x equals 0 and x equals 1, 2, 3. Again, those ordered pairs, the x is 0, the output is 2. This point was 3, 2. Alright, finally, what's the largest output achieved by your function? Well, the largest output, that is the largest y value, is right here, that pink dot. That's at 1, 2, 3. The largest output is y equals 4. Um, what x value does that occur at? Well, it looks like it occurs at x equals 1. So the ordered pair for that maximum value is 1, 4. One more quick graph here. Function notation. Just simply look at the graph, find the output and input value. So the first one says find g of negative 2. Negative 2 is in the parentheses, so it's an x. I go to where x is negative 2, go down to my graph, 1, 2, negative 3. At g of 0, that's the x value. I'm going to go to where x is 0. I also have to go down here to negative 3. They both have outputs of negative 3. At x equals 3, for g of 3, 1, 2, 3, I have to go up, 1, 2, 3, up to 4. And at 7, 4, 5, 6, then I don't have to move at all. That's actually the output of 0. The next part says, for what values of x do you solve g of x equals 0? Well, that's a y value because you're what you're set equal to. So I'm going to draw the line at y equals 0. And notice where I cross that line. Looks like I have, I cross at x equals negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. Those are the zeros of the x-intercepts of the function. Last question says, for how many values of x? So they don't want to know what the values of x are, just how many times. You have y equal 2. So I draw a line at 2, and I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So for 4 values, of x. And that's it. So try some of the function practice on the back of this.